everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and today we're going to explore this product. They are called Dilutions Shimmer Sprays by Ranger Ink. I'm so excited to check these out and see how we can use them on our coloring pages and other art projects. Okay, let's get started. Okay, Jennifer, I want to interrupt you for a minute to tell everyone to stay tuned to the end of the video where I will be telling them how to enter for a chance to win our monthly giveaway. We're giving away these two beautiful zebra products in one awesome prize. So stay tuned to the end to learn about that. And also we have two downloads for you. So at the end of the video, I'll tell you about this. This is the coloring page I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'll tell you how to download Download that and we also have this free download now if you're like me and you've been collecting these beautiful zebra mild liner brush pens and other products by zebra then you need a swatch chart so that you can um, keep track of them okay back to Jennifer Okay, these are the bottles here that we picked up. Now the story behind this is we were at Michael's doing some shopping and Steve found these. <laughs> Steve's my husband and business partner and yeah he's the one that asked me about these and said have you seen these? Should we buy these? <laughs> so that's how we ended up with these. Now they come in at about $12 per package so that's about $4 per bottle and I guess in the line they're saying there's $12 no 12 colors total in the line, but I saw 24 colors over on rangerink.com, so not sure about that. Dilutions is a big line for Ranger Ink. They have paints and all kinds of products in this Dilutions line. I don't own any of the other Dilutions products. This is my first in this line. I'm kind of excited about it, but what got us interested was this whole shimmery thing. Um, if you look at the bottom of the bottles, you can see that there's some mica sparkliness in there and there's going to be some shaking involved to get that mixed into it. So I've got some paper here. We're going to spritz it and see what they do. Um, I know what the color names are so let's just kind of get messy and see what happens here. The back says that it's a pearlescent shimmer that we can use on any paper craft or mixed media project. Shimmer sprays adhere to paper canvas, wood, fabric, and other porous surfaces. Uses a finishing spray or layer over other inks and paints to create luminous effects and backgrounds. We're always looking for good products to use for our backgrounds on our coloring pages, so I'm excited about that. Now they are acid-free, non-toxic, but there are warnings about not getting it on our eyes. So I'm going to assume that, um, you know, we need to be careful of things like our clothes and other things around us, not to get it on it in case it stains it. Um, it says to shake the bottle until the mixing bottle rattles and shimmer is suspended in the liquid. Spray directly onto the surface, clean the nozzle. I've read that in multiple places now that you have to be careful to keep the nozzle clean so that it doesn't clog up. Allow to air dry or heat with the Ranger heat gun um, if you want to speed up the heating, I mean, the drying time on this. So that's what they've given us as knowledge for this product. Now we get to play. I have stencils handy if we want to try that. Um, yeah, we just kind of get to play. So, <laughs> yay! Okay, so they're one ounce bottles. Now is there plastic on them? If there is, we are, there is. All right, time lapse as we struggle with plastic wrapping, go. Okay, little struggle and one band-aid later, we are without plastic wrapping now and we can have some fun. <laughs> Okay, so we have the two sets. This one's our, this is the greens, and this one has um, the pink and the gold and the white linen. And I do want to see how this looks on black paper too, not just white. So let me grab a piece of black paper. Okay, this is my black Canson pad here that it'll be fun to put it in here because if it makes a cool effect, I can doodle on top of it. So might as well 
put it in my sketchbook. Okay, so let's start with the green. This one is called Fresh Lime. Now the bottle does say, may ir irritate eyes, avoid contact with eyes in case of eye contact. Lots of eye warnings, adult use only. Um, I'm trying to see if it says the color name on here. Yep, Fresh Lime right there, to use shake bottle. Same instructions. Suspended in liquid, sprayed directly onto surface, okay. So I was hoping it had the color name on the bottle because it didn't have the color names on the package where the three bottles were together. And I have a wipe here to clean off the nozzle since I've been warned multiple times to keep the nozzle clean. So we'll do a spray here on the white and then we'll do a spray on the black and see the difference. I think it looks mixed a little bit more. Oh yeah, there's still some mica on the bottom. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, first one. There, that's the fresh lime. Okay, fresh lime. <clears throat> Okay, this one is Polished Jade. I'm gonna shake two at the same time. I don't hear a ball in Polished Jade. That's a problem. Huh. Definitely a ball there. No ball there. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Polished Jade. Okay. Oh, I didn't wipe off the nozzles. I was gonna be such a good girl. And then I was almost not a good girl. <laughs> Rosie looks up at you. Are you wondering what's going on? Am I a good girl? Okay, this one is called Vibrant Turquoise. Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wipe off the nozzle. Okay. Now swing this around. Swing this one around too. Oh, I'm seeing shimmers. Okay. I'll shake all three. Yeah, there's balls in all of them except the one. I got gypped. <laughs> okay, first one. This is bubblegum pink. Very pretty. Can you smell it, Rose? I don't smell anything. I smell the baby wipe, but not the spray. She keeps popping her head up every time we spray. Okay, this one is called Pure Sunshine. I love the names. Um, Ranger Ink always does really fun names. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think I put the cap on every time without wiping the nozzle. Okay, and then this one is white linen. So I assume we're not going to see it much on here, but we'll find out. There it goes. Oh, <laughs> that was satisfying. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna hit all of this with my heat gun, dry it down really good, and then we'll move it in the light and see what the pearlescent effect is. Okay, heat gun time.
Okay, I'm just finishing up with the drying. Um, a couple things came to light right away. The green here, what's it called? Polished Jade. It doesn't show up on the black, so I gave it a second spritz just in case maybe I didn't put enough on the black. It was, I don't know if it was my fault or not. Um, but yeah, this, even after the second spritz, you can't see it on the black. So if, if you're looking for a color to buy, because you can buy these individually, um, both at michaels.com and on rangerink.com. Um, so if that one, if you're looking to, to do it on dark colors, that one doesn't show up on black. But all of the others are doing really cool things on black. So let me show you now in the light. And I'll tell you right away, these are reminding me of my beloved Sparkle Pop pens by <laughs> Pentel. They are really neat. Look at that shine. Again, here's that. I'm beginning to wonder if this is not a shimmer spray. Look at it not shine. It says shimmer spray, but there's no shine there. See what I mean? Well, and that's the one that didn't have the ball in it, right? Right. So either I have a... They didn't get the, the stuff in it. I'm wondering if this Maybe was an oops. mislabeled it or something? Yeah, because there's no shine there and there was no ball. So all the others, it's labeled that it should be a shine. So I'm wondering if that was an accident, that we've got a matte one instead of one with shine on it. So just very interesting. If you have these and you got the trio, did yours have shine in it? Comment below. But all of the others are spectacular with the shine. I mean, don't you think, like, it totally is speaking to me like those Sparkle Pop pens. Mm -hmm. Almost a dual chrome, especially this one has that orange and gold type feeling like the Sparkle Pop pen does. Really fun. Now let's look at it on the black. This was this little blob right here is this green pen it spit on. And I mean this green one here, it spit on it. So just ignore that little spit. And let's move it in the light. I can't wait to doodle on top of this with the Sparkle Pop pens. Won't that be fun? <laughs> I'm going to totally do that. And I'll post my finished doodle um, on Instagram. I'll put my, my handle up right now. This is my Instagram. So follow me on. Oh, I'm right here. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram if you want to see my doodle that I eventually do um, on this black paper with my Sparkle Pop pens, okay? So I'll put this to the side and save it for another day when I can doodle because that is going to be really fun. <laughs> okay, so that's how it looks on dark paper. All right, so we have our swatches. What we also learned is this is not a precise tool. <laughs> like Steve was saying, it looks like sometimes you get strong um, spurts of ink. Sometimes you get really fine mist. So I want to experiment with that a little bit more. Let's try this Vibrant Turquoise a little bit and see like if, is it the angle that you hold it at? So let's take this. I'm going to use this to kind of protect. I have my microphone right here in front of me and I don't want to spray the microphone. I think I just hit the microphone. Sorry guys. I don't want to hit the microphone. And we are not sponsored by Ranger Inc. I was just looking around and realized this is a Tim Holtz mat that I'm working on. I just used the Ranger Inc heat gun. This is a Ranger Ink tool here. We're not it's Ranger Ink sponsored. We just happen to have a lot of his tools because they're really good. So, And they've been gifted to us by certain people as well. So, Okay, so I'm going to try spraying at more of an angle and see what we get here. Oh, <laughs> that's really cool. Okay, and then we already saw if we spray straight down, we get sort of a wreath type effect. If I hold it really high, we know this is going to be a mess, but we got to try it. Let's try a different color so we can see what it does. We'll try it with the bubble gum. So if I hold it, oh, shake first, Jennifer. Okay, and now if I hold it really high, 
Yeah, we get a really fine mist, some big, some little, and it goes everywhere. But if you want a fine mist, that's the way to do it. Oh yeah, and all over the mat. All over the mat, <clears throat> and up here, it's up where I was protecting my microphone. It's totally up there on, on my hands and everything. So you want to protect your entire work surface when you're playing around with this type of tool for sure. But look at how cool that is with the different two-tone effect. Now I'm wondering, thanks Steve, <laughs> he's like, here, clean yourself up. Um, I'm wondering how easy, now let me answer, I know you're all thinking, how easy is this going to be to clean up, Jennifer? So let me answer that question right away. This is really dried on. This is that tempered glass. It's coming right off with a baby wipe. Let's try my other favorite thing to do to clean up is with um, hand sanitizer, which is kind of a hot commodity now. Once upon a time, this was cheap and easy to find. It's harder to find now, although it's getting easier, at least around me. Um, that works too. That wipes it right off. It comes right off with hand sanitizer. So that means a little bit of rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer will come right off. Look how fun that is. <laughs> well, okay. So another trick I wanna try is can we paint with it? I'm gonna grab an acrylic brush here and if we spray it onto our matte board here, let's try gold, shake it up. It does settle really fast to the bottom. And I think I have some water. So I have no idea if It'd be better to paint with water with this or with alcohol. We're gonna have to try both. I don't know if this is more, I'm assuming it's water-based. Because I don't smell any alcohol when you do it, yeah. so. So can you get your brush a little wet and then can you pick it up and paint with it and get some pretty type of strokes going. <clears throat> and does it preserve the sparkle when you do it? Right. It's really interesting to see. I'll go in here again. So could you do like a two-step process where you paint your little image and then come in and then spray on top of it for more details, that kind of thing. Let's see, I ran out of room for my little flower I'm painting. Okay, then if we come back and deepen it up with our leftovers. Okay, good. I'll throw that in there. Wipe off the nozzle. Okay. Oh, look at that shine. Holy cow. That is impressive. And where I came back for the second sh um, pass is the shiniest. Oh dear, that could be the way to do the coloring page. Is paint. And then you could even come back with another spray. Interesting to get the layering. All right. And then I guess if you sprayed and got some off here, you could pick it up and do some background stuff. Ooh, can we reactivate? Okay, let's get a clean brush. This is dry, we're on mixed media paper. This is not watercolor paper. So this is like forcing it to wake up on paper that is going to say, no, no, it's mine. So again, if you think of standard cardstock as um, paper fibers that are like sponges and you hit it with anything wet, those sponges will expand, grab onto that wet medium and then shrink back up, right? 
That's what's happened. That's why it's all warped and everything now. So if you think of watercolor paper, watercolor paper has a treatment on it, has sizing on it, and that's why you can put water on it and it doesn't warp as quickly and the fibers don't swell up as much. That's what makes watercolor paper... stain as fast. Yeah, watercolor paper is special because of its treatment. So now when I hit this with water, again, those fibers are going to go whoa and swell up and um, but they're not going to want to let go of that color so we'll see what's going to happen the fibers are going to be unhappy i know that but will it reactivate and start moving that's my question because it could open up some um future things we could play with on watercolor paper oh, yeah. in the future today we're going to be coloring on cardstock not watercolor paper but i do want to just know <laughs> inquiring minds want to know so oh yeah see it's totally reactivatable is that a word and see the pink wakes up so you get a purple in there oh dear yes this is something that would be fun to play with on watercolor paper now usually when you do this technique though um the pearlescent type of effect is lessened so we're going to wake that up really good kind of um, agitate it into the fibers so this part of the paper now is, is probably really mad at me from um, all that agitating and all that extra water so let's now hit it with the um, heat gun and calm all the fibers down dry it back down and then I want to see if it's got any shine right in this area that we just um, really messed with. That's going to answer a whole lot of questions. We've, we've done a lot of experiments and then we're going to move into the coloring page and actually put everything to work because I think I've learned what I need to learn. But I do want to blow dry this now and just see does it still have shine or is it just pretty color at this point. So here we go. Okay my poor paper is just warping like crazy because we're just We've really abused it here, but that's okay because that's what we're about to do. I want to see what my paper can handle. Um, that's why we're experimenting first. And now we're going to see what kind of reflection. Look over here. Look at how pretty. Okay, now let's look over here. And I want to see how much of the reflection is still there. I'm gonna stick my head in here really close. Yeah, I don't see any reflection left out here. Uh, there's still some there. Definitely when you layer it up, you get more of the iridescent. So if you want lots of reflection, the more you put down and where it's layered, like where that little pink hit on top of the turquoise, R lots of reflection there. I'm gonna move it really slow here and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Everywhere where we've layered, we got more reflection. Everywhere where there's a single layer, it's not as iridescent. So that's how to get the most iridescence out of this product. Okay, I think I'm ready to take this to a coloring page. So let me show you the coloring page I have in mind. If you look at the back wall, <laughs> you can see a page that I um, painted oh, about a month ago now. Um, I was experimenting with gouache. It's a kind of water soluble paint. It's kind of like watercolor. It's a cousin to watercolor. And I was practicing with three different brands of gouache to see how they acted differently from each other. And I just kind of freehanded these three different flowers. And I've had a lot of comments on the three flowers that a lot of you thought they were really pretty and you would like a chance to color them yourselves. So I took a photo with my phone and took it into my digital drawing program and turned those three flowers into a coloring page. So this one will be available to everyone who has access to our premium library over at coloringbliss.com. Now to get access to our premium library, all you need to do is become one of our paid members. Our lowest tier to um, get access to that is just $5 a month. Really cheap and there's over 
Five hundred. Yeah, probably closer to six hundred <laughs> now. It's close to six hundred coloring pages and other resources there. Swatch pages, um, color wheels, worksheets, charts, all kinds of things you get access to when you become a colorist. And there's other levels as well that get you more things like workshops and discounts at our print shop. All kinds of amazing things. So if you would like to color this page, which is inspired by that piece of art on the back wall, then come and get it. We're also going to have other new pages coming up for the holidays that are upon us. We're coming into into um, fall and all the fun Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and all those uh, seasons that I do lots of coloring pages for. So it's a great time to become a paid member over at Coloring Bliss and support us. So this is the page we're going to color. And I'm going to really try to use a lot of the dilutions and I think we're probably gonna end up using the sparkle pops with them <laughs> because how can we not? But the way to really show off a sparkly product is to have some matte type colored items next to it. If everything is sparkly, then it's like, whoa, there's nothing that your eyes can rest on. So we need to have some matte things mixed in with the sparkly. So I'm going to sit here for a moment and ponder this. Now that I know and understand what the product will do, I need a moment to ponder. Okay, so I've done a lot of prepping here. I've got the middle segment, the middle flower, all masked off with the blue painter's tape, which is a low tack tape. You could use washi tape, any kind of low tack tape. And then the side areas where I don't want the, the spray to get, I have covered with wax paper. You could use whatever you've got, some sheet protectors, some plastic, whatever you have. All of this is taped down onto, this is a plastic cutting board. You guys have seen me use this a lot. These are cutting boards I pick up at um, Dollar Tree. They're two for a dollar, so they're great and cheap and easy to take to the sink and clean. That way I can move this around any way I want. Okay, so we're gonna focus obviously on the center flower. That way we'll have time to finish it. Now what we've decided to do is kind of color the background first and then we'll come in and color the flower and we're going to use for the background the fresh lime and the vibrant turquoise and then we'll use the white linen as well to sort of what's the word soften these two colors uh, color plus white is a tint so it will hopefully tint it down Now, one thing I haven't taken into into consideration is how opaque these sprays are and is it going to cover up all my line work we're going to find out right now so let's take everything we've learned and apply it to this page so i would like the top half to be that turquoise color for like a bluish sky mm. and the bottom to be the fresh lime like grass so what i've done is i've taken a stencil that i had that has this nice little scalloped edge and prepped it with same stuff, the wax paper, and taped it down so that the holes of the um, stencil won't let the paint through. I'm going to lay it down about where I want the horizon line. Now with art, and Steve can tell us about this, typically you don't want your horizon line to be right in the middle. It's more pleasing to have it where, Steve? On one of the thirds. On one of the thirds. That's kind of they call it the rule of thirds. So what I like to do is look and say, would I rather have more grass? So the third line would be more down here. Or would I rather have, um, no, more sky would be down here. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys get what I mean. Or would I rather have more grass? So the third line would be up here. This would just be the sky. Or would I like lots of sky? So looking at this, we have lots of greenery going on, and I think the greenery would look better with blue sky behind it. We'd have more contrast. So let's have more sky and less grass. 
So that's my thinking. So I'm gonna kind of judge about where I want it. It doesn't have to be exactly third. Don't get out your, your ruler or anything. Just eyeball whatever looks kind of pleasing to your eye. So I'm gonna kind of use these little leafy tendrils coming down as about my third point and come down just a bit away from that and have everything from here up be sky, okay? Now, I do sort of want to preserve the flower. So I may try to mask that flower a little bit. I'm a little worried that this blue is going to be really strong on top of that flower. Yeah. So I think I'm going to grab a sticky note. A really fast way to do a mask is with a sticky note. It's already got some low tack stick to it and you just need a shape at this point. So you can just eyeball it. Just don't cut the sticky part off. Um, so I'm gonna roughly cut this out to about the shape of my flower, a little smaller. Doesn't have to be exact here because we've got lots of layers we're going to be doing. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. Okay. So, but it's not good enough. Let's go smaller. The reason I'm worried is because there were parts of the petals that were still getting hidden behind there. Okay. That's better. That's even better. Okay. So like I said, sticky notes make a really great masking tool because now it's stuck down with low tack. All right, I think I've done all my prep. No more stalling, Jennifer. Dive in. So we're gonna do the angle spray. I really liked the look of that. <clears throat> and usually on the sky, it's darker on the top and gets You're lighter right. as you go down so you could turn it upside down. I could turn down. the whole thing around. Okay, we gotta clean, I gotta clean my workspace off so we have room for this. Okay, let's turn this whole thing around now that I've got some room to work. Set this to where I have already decided. I've got my mask. Um, this is now going to help catch any <laughs> spray just to make things easier for cleanup on myself. Come on, go under here. Okay. All right. I liked your suggestion, Steve. Okay, so we're using this one, which is the Polish Jade. No, that's the one that's not shining. The Vibrant Turquoise. Give it a shake. And here we go, folks. It's not shaking very well. There you go. I'm watching to make sure all that mica, I think it is, is getting mixed in. There. Okay. And we're going to put this up to protect the microphone. Here we go. Um, back a bit. Get your hand out of there. Okay, now the white. And I think the white we want to come the other direction with. I'm gonna be a very interesting color when we're done here. Turn the whole shebang around. Line it all up. Line up my scallops again. I think I did this a bit crooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a hill. Okay, now the white. Because I want, like Steve said, this should be darker, so I want my tint to go up that way. Good. And spray this way now. And remember, anywhere where it's layering, we should get the most shine. Clean that off. 
Okay, I'm going to dry that down really good now. And we'll see how it looks. I really like the mix of the white into that color. I keep forgetting what color we're using. This one, the vibrant turquoise. But I do wish we had gotten more of the turquoise up here. So I'm going to lay this back down just to protect the bottom. And I'm just going to do a more direct spray right here, just straight down. Because we know what that will do. It will be really intense right there. Like that. Oh, yeah, that's intense. Okay, let that sit. I'm going to dry that down now. Okay. Oh, it's really shiny. Mm. And the illustrator lines are, are fine. I can see them all. How I'm going to color them in? I haven't figured that out yet. We're going to figure it out. This is really pretty. There's a peek for you. I really want to pull that off, but I'm making myself wait. <laughs> I don't know why, just because it's fun. Okay, now we're going to do the grass. And the, the, we were like, how are you going to do the scalp the other way? I didn't think that through very well, but that's okay. Now it'll have a scallop this direction. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a new thing and everybody will do it, right? Okay, <laughs> let's see. Let's turn the whole thing around again. There we go. Protect the microphone. And now we're bringing up our green. So this is fresh lime. And I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Darker on the corners with more uh, tinted in the middle. So do you need to go the other way? I don't know. Because I want... I don't... I don't know. Because if you're going to spray at an angle, wouldn't you need to go the other way to get the darkest, closest... Like if you want the bottom to be dark, then I think you want to turn it 180 degrees. <laughs> that? Yeah. Okay. Then when you spray it, your bottle will be closest to the bottom. Yeah. Which we'll get from this. Color. Yeah, okay. So we want this here. I think half the time I'm spending masking and protecting and preparing. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I gotta shake again. It's not gonna squirt on me, is it? Okay. Okay, that wasn't laying very flat. I think my scallop idea is failing, <laughs> but that's okay. It's okay, it looked pretty. Now the white, I wonder too, oh, let's try it for the, the green. Um, I wondered on the blue up above if it would, the white would work better if you dry the green first, then come in with the white. Um. If you would get better tinting than mixing it while it's still wet. So let's try that. More drying. Okay, now the white. And I'm gonna focus a lot of white right here because I'm picturing maybe we could get really serious with the white in the middle. What would that look like? I don't know. Like that. And then let's go ahead and darken up the green down here. Or dry it. Let's dry it. <laughs> I was going to say, or you could use your darker green. Oh, yeah. It's not shiny. But... Oh, well, let's, I know. Let's, okay, this is that darker green that Steve's talking about. Remember the one that doesn't have any shine that's supposed to have shine? I'm going to put it on now. Oh, I'm scared of it. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my word. Okay. And now put the shine with it. So it's sort of mixed while it's wet. Learning as we go. 
Okay, and I haven't been wiping any nozzles off. Okay, let's dry this off and then I'm gonna go wipe all nozzles off and then we'll do some pull off of the tape, reveal what kind of masterpiece I've created. <laughs> <laughs> so, stay tuned. Okay, I think we've officially tried a lot of combinations, a lot of layering, uh, so I'm really excited. Um, I, I was planning on using the pink and the gold on the actual flower, but I think we'll call it good for all this. Oh my word, this one is just a mess. Hmm. I don't know what's going on here with this particular bottle. This bottle is leaking. Look at that. We have some serious issues with this one. All right. Okay. The cleanup is going to be a beast. First, we'll pull off this mask. There's that. Oh, it's a pretty little shiny mask. I'd save that and use it on something if I wanted to be really frugal. But we're going to pull these off now. Looking good. You can kind of see the scallop if you really, really want it. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be seriously shiny. I'm really excited. Okay, pull this off. Okay. I'm really excited about this. So, again, uh, we have a really shiny background. So that means for the actual flower, the illustration, we need to get some matte in there so your eye has a place to rest and it'll make the shiny seem even shinier. So that's my next thing to figure out. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Oh my goodness. It's like foiled. Okay, let's go the other view. Because sometimes this view will show. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay, all that struggle is officially paid off. The ground looks like little pieces of grass in there. The sky, we got a little bit of lime somehow. Oh no. <laughs> it was just dust. Oh my goodness. That is a huge payoff. That was a lot of work and I am really covered in paint and there's a lot of cleanup. So, I'm still on the fence and we need to figure out if I can color on top of this. That's the next goal. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm gonna try a few different products, a few experiments. I'll be right back to let you know what I learn. Okay, I think my beloved Moonlight Jelly Roll pens are going to come to the rescue. They are very opaque and very um, matte colored. So I think that's what we're going to try going on top of them. I have uh, lots of colors to choose from. We got grays and fluorescents and nice matte, lots of colors here to pick from. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse some coloring um, and see how this all sort of progresses. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So. Why don't you just sit back and enjoy. I'll come back in when I have something of interest to share with you. And let's see how this progresses.
used the Moonlight pens and colored in the flower. And I really like how the Moonlight pens went on top of wherever the ink was sprayed. Worked really well. What I am unhappy with right now is everything feels very um, one tone, like um, mid-tone. No good light contrast, dark contrast, everything's sort of mid-tone. So I've grabbed my white Posca paint pen and I'm trying to add some white highlights on here to bring some bright moments back. Not bright as in reflective because that's not lacking here, <laughs> but bright as in bright moments of high contrast um, to try to get some yeah contrast in here um, and the Posca paint pens actually having a little trouble going on top of the moonlight paint pens or moonlight gel pens but I'm liking it I'm just gonna have Steve come and take a peek I'm half tempted to do a little outlining with the white paint pen, but I'm worried that uh, because I'm tired, my hand is tired and a little shaky, that the white lines will look a little funky, so I'm a little scared to do that. But the white Posca pen is also very opaque and flat, so it would give us a good contrast with the shiny background, so that could be good, I don't know. What do you think, Steve? How do you like it so far? I haven't moved it in the light for them to see how cool it's looking. See what I mean about we've got the shine of the yeah. background and now the matte of the flower. So it gives your eye a place to rest and then that moment yeah. of, ooh, shine, it really makes the shine that much more special. So I'm liking it a lot, but again, like I said, it's kind of all feeling one tone, yeah. no moments of light, soft, and then really deep dark. So, but I don't know what to really to do to fix it without spending a whole lot more time. Yeah, you'd almost have to come in with colored pencils or yeah, something. Yeah, that's black color pencil yeah. might be able to help. Like a really dark greens. Yeah. Yeah, those are Ooh. really getting lost, those... Uh, those stems. Yeah, the stems down here. So we could come in with some, oh, do I dare? It's kind of like once you get started, you can't stop this process. The white highlighting. I think it needs more dark. Yeah, it probably does. Do I want to do all of that? <laughs> is the question because I'm kind of liking it it's it just could use more hmm. well, try a little bit see what you think yeah well, what about a dark marker or something marker on top of all this could be problematic so I'm gonna try this is a black what do you call it black um, fabric castell polychromo Typically, I don't like using black as my shading. So I'm being a little lazy here, to be honest with you guys. Yeah, it's just scraping up the, the Moonlight pen. That's what I was worried about. Hmm. But it's actually working. I'm going really light. See the paint flakes coming up? That's from the Moonlight pen. Yeah, maybe it'd have to be a dark green marker because it's translucent. It wouldn't pick up the, especially if it's an alcohol marker, it wouldn't pick up or reactivate the colors. Hmm. Well, it kind of helped. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to try over here on our swatches, if I grab, okay, so it's mostly this. If I grab, what's the opposite of this color? Orange. Orange, like a, maybe this color. If 
I were to come in and tap around on it to add a shadow behind my flower and move that in the light, do we lose the shine? No, we don't. Okay. So if I get brave and just, let's see, my light source technically is coming this direction. So let's start over here. Because if I get scared and want to stop. What do we think? Is it just muddying it up? What if I go to a lighter one, like tan? Tan is just a... Uh... So this is the Blick Studio Brush Tip Alcohol Markers. Uh, I think it's making it worse. It's making the flower feel... Yeah, I was thinking dark marker for the stems to give them more contrast. I was hoping to make the flower oh. stand out more. That's making it worse. Where is my blue? Let's see if I can fix that. I grabbed um, a Celadon green and I'm going over it now to kind of blend out what I just did. Glad I did it on the shadow side. That at least was smart. Okay, just continue that Celadon green up here a little bit more. Okay, so that, it was working, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do, which was give the flower more dimension. It was just making it sink more down into the background. So it was a good experiment, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So we could play around with the stem and try to give the stem more dimension, but I think it will do the same thing. It will make the stem sink more into the background because the background has so much dimension and shadow. I think the only thing that would save this would be to make, well not save it, but to help the stem pop out more would be to make the stem lighter, which is again with the Posca paint pen. And I think I'm just gonna call this a done. I think if I fiddle with it more at this point, I will be more and more unhappy with it. I think it's good the way it is. Could it be better? Yes. I think I've learned a lot. These sprays have a lot of potential. I think I need to play more with them. I love the foiled effect we're getting. They're a lot of work, these sprays, but this mottled, really intense, interesting background is really worth playing around more with. I like the play of the shine with the matte. So things I would improve on is I should have left more of the white of the background. I think that would have helped because now, because we've lost the main illustrated flower. So that would be what I would try to do different next time would be to leave more of the white of the background. Then the solid um, colored illustration I think would have popped better. And then we would have these moments of the foil. So that's what I would try to do different next time. But I'm excited about these foils. I wish that the foil of the polished jade was actually foiled. I think next time I'm at Michael's, I'm gonna go look and see the other bottles of the polished jade and just look at the bottom of the bottles and see if I just got a, a dud. <laughs> That's my guess. I think I got a dud. <laughs> so I'm excited about them. It's really fun. I hope that you had fun looking at them. Let me know. Are you going to try out the Dilutions Shimmer Sprays? If you are, which color was most inspiring to you of the six that I tried out? Which color was most fun for you? There they are again, our six colors. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope you had fun. Um, and now I'm going to turn a little time over to the other Jennifer to let you know about our giveaway and some free downloads and again how to download this coloring page if you're interested. So Jennifer, take it away. 
Thanks, Jennifer. Here we are. Okay, now, first off, I want to remind you that if you would like this coloring page that I just finished coloring, then come on over to Coloring Bliss. There's a link in the video description, and it will take you to where you can learn how to download this. Remember, this one is part of the premium library, so that means you need to become a Bliss colorist. That's just five bucks a month, and you can have access to this and almost 600 coloring pages. I'm so close to that. I bet we'll pass that this holiday season with all the pages I'm drawing for you. So come on and get this coloring page. Now I have a freebie for you, and that is this page right here. It's a swatch chart. If you are like me and you have been collecting these, the beautiful Zebra Mild Liner pens, then you need a swatch chart so that you can keep track of all your colors. Now I've taken all of the confusion out of the Zebra Mild Liner brand. I've got the creative markers up here and the brush pens down here. It's going to help you figure out which packs you need down here. I've made mention of the five different packs you can collect, and I even have the Japanese names for them. So if you happen to come across those, you will know which packs are which. This is a powerful <laughs> swatch chart that Steve helped me create, um, and I have finally figured out what all of the different um, abbreviations mean. It's it's all here for you. And if you don't have the Zebra Mild Liners and you need them, then you need to enter our giveaway. One lucky winner is going to win these two packages of beautiful Zebra Mild Liner pens. So file, follow the link. The winner will be announced on October 1st, 2020. So that means you have until the end of September 2020 to get your entries in so you have a chance to win these. Now sit back relax and enjoy as you watch me swatch this beautiful swatch chart. Okay, cue the montage. All right, I hope you enjoyed that swatching. Good luck everyone with the giveaway and I'm sending you right back to Jennifer now. All right, Jennifer, thanks for telling them all about those freebies and the giveaway. And I will just, again, let you take a look at that pretty shine. Let me get it in the light right there. There's the shine. Thanks again, everybody, for experimenting and enjoying this coloring with me. And from all of us at Coloring Bliss, I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.